Good evening. I have a big voice, so in order to you stay quiet. First of all, Vinita, we love you. We love Narin. I'm so inspired by the wonderful speeches about Narin. But if I may humbly add one more note, that he is endlessly inquisitive curiosity about arts and the culture. I remember dearly a number of occasions that I got to host Vinita and Narin in our museum, talking about arts and culture and looking at art, wonderful Indian art and wonderful Asian art in general. And his inquisitive mind stays with me forever along with his such a wonderful loving smiles. He always smiled. What a wonderful generosity embodied in a timeless spirit of kindness. So no, we miss him terribly, but I also know that he will be happy that we're all here together. Asian society has not been having its annual meeting in person for more than two years, I believe. It's so wonderful. I'm so excited. But once I get excited, sometimes I'll go wrong off a script, or if I have a script to begin with. So if I say anything wrong, please curb your a urge to come to stage to slap me. <laughs> Don't slap me, please. But if you do that, I will be as generous as Chris Rock. I promise I'm not going to sue you. <laughs> anyway, my job, real job here today is to introduce one of very unique artists. Of course, artists are always unique. And he's Xiao Zhe Xie. One key word that comes to my mind about Xiao Zhe is compassion. He is deeply concerned and caring for the well-being of his fellow humans, individually and collectively, locally and globally. Through his art, he documents time, documents space, documents interactions among humans, and through his expressions and the visual commentary of worldly events. He give us a unique artistic perspective about what art can do. One of the things art can do is healing. Another is celebration. The another is courage in the time of great difficulties. This is what art can do. Also, as you know, people build museums for artists. So when we learn history, not only we should read books, I like to read books, but also I lo love to say we need to look at art, come to museums. Each and every object has a story to tell. And collectively, they have a whole world, humanity, the stories about them, about us to tell. Of course, I say so because my profession is a museum director. <laughs> so come to that. The second key word I like to think about Xiao Zhe is a humanist. He documents, he recreates, he interprets for all of us, and most powerfully, he tells visual stories of our struggle of our triumphs, of our ongoing endeavor to find a better tomorrow. And Xiao Zhe can do that because he has encyclopedic knowledge about human history. Of course, he has genius as an artist. I came to San Francisco to work for the Asian Museum in 2008, and he came in 2009. Of course, he has gone through very stunning trainings and been teaching. And he came to San Francisco to be a teacher in Stanford. So he's also a teacher. So not only through his art, but through his teaching. He impacts students, communities, and all of us. And that is what makes Xiao Zhe one of the very unique kind. And I think he chose a very good place to be. That is the place in San Francisco. 
And in life, is all about perspective. I like to say, it is right to say San Francisco is in the west coast of the United States. But let's not forget, and I like to emphasize, San Francisco is the east coast of the Pacific. That defines what, who we are and where we are. And this also defines great significance of the Asian society in Northern California. Thirdly, Xiaozi, please come. <laughs> and uh, his work is right now featured in a show called After Hope. How timely is that? The After Hope in the Asian Art Museum. So Xiaozi's work is featured in that group show. So come to visit us in the museum as well. Xiaozi. Yeah. Thank you so much, Jay, for your uh, very kind introduction. This has been such an uplifting and um, inspiring evening. Distinguished members of the Asia Society, honored guests, and friends, I'm deeply honored and humbled by this meaningful award from our community. I'm so touched by all the warm compliments from friends. And I would like to take this opportunity to give my heartfelt thanks to my family, friends, supporters, collaborators, colleagues, students, and express my gratitude to the Asia Society. We have lived through the darkest days of the COVID-19 pandemic a time when death looms large, taking away loved ones, putting us in dilemmas, threatening our faith in the most fundamental values. We live in a surreal time of isolation and segregation that feels more and more like a political allegory, a satirical drama using the face mask as a prop on the stage and a nightmare in broad daylight. Neighbors are divided like guardies. Home is the prison. In the recent past, we witnessed the outrage following the death of George Floyd in the development of the Black Lives Matter movement. The Stop Asian Hate outcry following the Atlanta spa shootings and the threat to a peaceful transfer of power and democratic principles during the Capitol riot. We live in a world where war and violence continue to traumatize us. Political polarization and racial injustice persist to divide us. And the history of censorship continues to haunt us as freedom of thought and speech in many regions of the world are still being suppressed. I have always wondered what art could do in tumultuous times. How do I position myself between the ivory tower of ac academia and the changing world at large? Over the years, I have gravitated towards art that is socially engaged. I once said, in an interview that political struggles and human tragedies are major concerns that compel me to make work. I'm not proclaiming that art can solve world problems, but rather that personal experiences and social conditions shape my consciousness and worldview and set the tone for my work. I came to the US in 1992 and since the mid-90s, I have attempted to periodically create large and complex works to address difficult subjects. These subjects range from the heartbreaking history of student movements in China throughout the 20th century, the humanitarian crisis during the Iraq war, the history of banned books, to the global issues of censorship and cultural eradication. I remember my elder son, Victor, and I read Dante's Divine Comedy together on Zoom 
when Victor was stranded at college in Boston during shelter in place. As we follow the paths of the poets Dante and Virgil through the various cycles of hell, we noticed a similarity with the pandemic, how it was unfolding globally, taking hundreds of thousands of lives in a dark, never-ending winter. I spent most of my time in 2021 preparing and making panorama of eternal night. It is a monumental five-panel oil painting focusing on global pandemic with an additional series of thematically related brush and ink painting scrolls. Uh, one of them, in fact, one of my favorites is uh, being displayed uh, to the left of the room. I was particularly inspired by the complexity, intensity, and drama in the portrayal of human sufferings in Dante's Inferno. And when I searched for other art historical references, I found some of the most powerful expressions of humanity in religious art and discovered parallels and affinities between art of the East and the West. The Tang Dynasty mural in Dunhuang Cave 158, depicting the devastated disciples mourning the passing of Buddha, Ziato's The Lamentation of Christ in early Italian Renaissance, these works are equally moving for me, particularly at a time of emotional distress. I have always admired Goya's nightmarish portrayal of violence and insanity. In some, some of my ink paintings, I pay tribute to Sergei Eisenstein's film, Battleship Potemkin, Picasso's painting, Guernica, and David Wernerowicz's performance piece, Silence Equals Death. The juxtaposition of historical and modern styles and images from the past and the present have opened up new possibilities. In my new work, the expressions of humanity across different cultures and times resonate with one another, reaffirming my belief that art can be an important channel for understanding between peoples. It has been a while now, and I'm still struck by the term game changer, which uh, seems to be the goal I'm striving for rather than achieved. I feel so far away from what it suggests. How unrelated it seems to my humble day-to-day -day effort, the solitary action of making a painting or writing a short poem, a critique session with students, another Zoom lecture, an essay, a gallery walks through, a poetry reading, a new exhibition. Does any of it change the game? And sometimes I ask myself, what do I, what have I brought to this world through these dark pictures with a seemingly pessimistic outlook? There is so much skepticism, so much irony and cynicism, so much anger in today's culture, but I want to do something different. An art critic once told me that you can do all but anything sentimental in contemporary art. I'm acutely aware I'm risk being perceived as nostalgic and sentimental. And indeed, making and exhibiting panorama of eternal night was like crying out loud in public. Yet in grappling with loss, grief, and trauma, I give myself the permission to cry out loud and speak about empathy, human compassion, resilience, and hope. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, 
Xiaozi, don't go yet. I get to ask you a question. It always strikes me that your art is so timely. The piece that we're auctioning off is a part of the large ensemble of your visual commentary expression about this worldwide pandemic. And you do so by weaving contemporary with history, East and West throughout the entire humanity. So what's next? What next project are you going to work on? <laughs> well, this, uh, following on your lead, um, th that particular painting is from uh, a series of uh, ink, brush and ink paintings that I've done throughout the year uh, 2021. And uh, so I would uh, consider, I consider this group of works being kind of journalistic, kind of, um, well, uh, diaristic visual journals of the pandemic. And uh, it, the whole series uh, covers a wide range of uh, geographical regions and uh, also using references from different uh, cultures. Uh, so what's next? That's very hard. And uh, as I speak and as I'm, Enjoying this uh, festive uh, atmosphere, this uplifting spirit of uh, the gala, uh, my mind sometimes you know, goes back to what I'm seeing um, about what's going on in Ukraine, um, in um, Shanghai. So, you know, we are, we are, not, all, we are not do the pandemic, and uh, there's so much to do in art um, in the future. <laughs>